Welcome to Let's Therapy, where we get real and raw about your mental health, faith, and blended family. We're your hosts, counselors, Scott and Vanessa Martindale. Now let's therapy. Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Therapy. We are your hosts, Scott and Vanessa Martindale, counselors, married. Yes. You know, all around just fun people that love to talk about blended families and mental health. Yes, love it. Yes. Absolutely love it. Well, today we're going to talk about uh, a question response that was from IG that came to us. And here is the, the topic. The topic. Parenting through high conflict situations, maintaining mental stability, and how to have conflict that leads to resolutions without shutting down emotionally. Yes. So... So high conflict spouses, man, they are everywhere and we have to learn to deal with those. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's one of the things that we experience a lot in blended family ministry is, you know, having the high conflict ex-spouse and where it creates just very um, just strenuous co-parenting relationships. It's very difficult. And so, you know, as as we talk about this, this question that this person sent in, and and it's such a good question again, because so many people deal with this. And I would say that the first thing, you know, whenever you're dealing with a high conflict ex-spouse, you know, uh, is, is practice active listening. I think active listening can be, um, just it's just pivotal you know you want to practice listening by giving your full attention to the other person without interrupting this shows that you're not just um hearing but you are listening to the words and the things that they are saying show empathy and understanding you know paraphrase their concerns and validate their emotions like whatever they're saying to you try repeating that back to them to make sure that you're understanding the message that they're giving to you and that you're receiving it correctly. And this also can help create a safe space for open dialogue. Yeah. And and I would just, anybody who just heard that and went, wait a second. Why would I do that? So I'm going to approach this and we're going to approach this today with, listen, you've got to have some, some planned out thoughts and processes of how you deal with high conflict. You can't do this purely through emotional responses because active listening That's a part where you have to sit back and go, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to listen to what their concerns are, and I'm going to verbally kind of make sure that they feel like I understand that. That's what active listening is. In order to do that, you're going to have to set your emotions and your maybe even desire for more conflict or combative responses aside. Yeah. We're talking about how to resolve in high conflict. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to be able to express yourself calmly. So that means controlling your emotions and expressing your own concerns and viewpoints and communicating them in a calm and respectful manner. Now, sometimes these high conflict things are happening face to face. Yes. So you're maybe getting screamed at or yelled at and you're really wanting to go in the defensive mode. But it's important that you remain calm and avoid blaming or criticizing. You can talk about the situation without pointing out the individual. Yes. So avoid uh, blaming or criticizing the person and focus on I statements. Just say, hey, I feel this way. Yeah. I feel this way. Mm -hmm. Not you do this or you do that or you've done this. Or you make the kids feel this way or you make them do this. Yeah. This is those are blaming statements. We're talking about I statements. And blaming statements can lead to defensiveness. And within that, then there's, you know, discord and there's arguments. So. Active listening, it's expressing yourself calmly and stay present, you guys. Um, staying present in the moment during conflict, you know, focus on what you what you are dealing with at the moment instead of dwelling on the past mm-hmm. grievances or worrying about future outcomes. It's so easy for us to dig up the trash from the past and want to sling mud, so to speak, at one another. But remember, just stay present and stay focused on what it is that you guys are trying to work through. Focus on the issue at hand and work together to find a resolution. Mm-hmm. Yeah, typically there is probably a more common sense resolution that's that's available right it's a matter of how much emotion you're going to put into this and how much you want to blame or shame or uh, be combative generally there is a logical solution that says hey our children are dealing with this so this is the best method for moving forward yes and what is your thoughts what are my thoughts this is what you know this is co-parenting this is how we go okay this is what's happening, and this is what I think, and this is what you think, and not so much putting 
the children's thought processes and what you know maybe they're telling you they have to have at front and center. You're trying to focus this from a parent perspective of saying, hey, what is our collaborative approach? Right. And I love that you said the collaborative approach because there's the 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 collaborative problem solving, right? It's mm-hmm. the approach, you know, approach the conflict as a team. Try to work together as a team with your co-parent. And guys, we understand that a lot of, we can't do that with a lot of our co-parents. But if we can, and if we can work towards a common goal rather than adversaries, mm-hmm. so to speak, or being adversaries and fighting against one another, you know, this will come, this will bring about more positive outcomes and resolutions. And, you know, try brainstorming, if at all possible, together. Solutions that um, they both of you may have, like, hey, I think this could work. What do you think could work? And be open to compromise. You know, be open to meeting your co-parent halfway and saying, you know what, I'm, I I don't ag- I don't fully agree on this, but I'm willing to do this, you know, and, and, you know, again, getting their feedback and thoughts as well. It allows for everyone in the room to have a voice. Yeah. And if things get out of control, take a break. Just take a break. Yeah. You know, I, I see these happening a lot, you know, via text message. There's a lot of conversations that happen via text message. You know, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, listen, this is getting kind of too heated for us. Uh, I want to be collaborative. I want to find a solution, but I feel like I'm just getting too emotional about this. Let's take a break. Let's sleep on it. And let's talk tomorrow. There's nothing wrong with saying, hey, I don't want to go into this place where we're making highly emotional decisions or we're just being so combative and we can't come to an agreement. So I'm just going to take a break. I'm not going to say anything I don't want to say. And I'm just going to come back to this at another time. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Another solution, you guys, it's, fo- it's, it's you know, focusing on the solutions. Shift your focus of the discussion from, you know, if, if, if you get into, if you're trying to have um, a conversation with your ex-spouse and it, it becomes high conflict, you know, shift the focus of the discussion from assigning blaming to finding practical solutions. You know, if you find yourself starting to blame or if you find that they're starting to be like, hey, like, let's not do this. Let's not get into this. Let's focus to focus on the solutions. Redirect the conversation back to to the solution and what you are guys wanting. Explore different options and be willing to consider to consider alternative perspectives. Again, this is an opportunity for you to be able to share your thoughts and they can share their thoughts. Yeah. And otherwise, you know, setting boundaries is another big thing here. We want to create healthy conflict um, atmospheres. So setting boundaries is a big thing. It's saying, hey, we can have this conversation, but we're not going to go into this anymore. We're not going to sling the mud. We're not going to call names. We're not going to do these things. We're just setting these boundaries to say, hey, we know how to settle conflict. We know how to make decisions, but what we're not going to do is go this direction. Yeah. We're not going to do this. And if we do, if that boundary is crossed, we're going to stop and we're going to say, hey, I just can't do that. That boundary is crossed. And uh, we can come and collectively talk again later. Yeah. But right now we're going to stop. Yeah. And that goes both ways too. So yeah. there are boundaries set both ways of saying, hey, and this is maybe a conversation you have right up front. It's saying, hey, we, do, we, we don't deal with conflict very well. So why don't we start with saying, hey, what are your boundaries? Like, what do you, where do you not want to go with this? Because I want to be able to solve a problem yeah. that focuses on that problem and not every single problem over the last, you know, decade of years. Yeah. So how do we do that? So talk to each other about boundaries. Yeah. And, you know, try, I think trying to seek understanding, you know, you, when people have a reaction, you know, understanding that this may not really have anything to do with you, but it could be something that is going on inside of their home or there's outside circumstances and it could be things that are going on within their heart. So seeking to understand, try to understand the underlying reasons behind the other person's perspective, their behavior, um, you know, empathize with their viewpoint. Empathy can take you such a long way in relationships. Just being able to voice like, hey, I, I'm i so sorry that you're going through this or, hey, you sound really upset right now. Like, is there something that I did wrong or, you know, um, is there anything that I can help you with? Just showing empathy can go such a long way. And Um, even if you don't necessarily agree with it, you can still empathize and say, I'm so sorry that you feel that way. Um, you know, is there anything that I can do to make this better? Or I'm so sorry that, you know, this is going on. What can we do to move in a positive direction? Yeah. And practicing forgiveness. Um, so we're moving kind of toward the end of this list and, and obviously, you know, 
healthy relationships are not without past pain. And so how do we find healthy is we have to understand that forgiveness has to be a part of our, our process. So if you want to understand how to deal with conflict without bringing up the past, that's where forgiveness comes in. That's where we talk about that, you know, so many times of saying, how much pain do you want to carry and how long do you want to carry it? At some point, you've got to lay it down. You've got to lay it down and say, hey, listen, if every conversation we have has to deal with everything that happened while we were married or during the divorce or those first few years, I mean, at what point do you just say, listen, let's choose to forgive each other so that we can be uh, in the best form for our co-parenting? Yeah. And it's just such a hard thing to do. Yeah. Well, and, you know, forgiveness is one of those things. We've said this before. It's something that God gives us in abundance. But for us, it is so hard to give. And that's just because of our flesh and our flesh nature and our sin nature. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you guys, the last thing that I that we would say is, you know, follow up. Once a resolution has been reached, follow up with the other person to ensure that both of you are satisfied or that you agree with the outcome. You also want to address any lingering concerns or issues that may arise and reaffirm your commitment to maintaining open communication. And so I think that is one of the most pivotal things when it comes to having high conflict um, uh, co-parenting issues is try to maintain communication. And maybe for a season, you know, it's that your ex-spouse and your new spouse are the one doing the communication. Maybe it's through an app. Maybe it's through text message or email only. Just be sure to maintain communication in some, you know, fashion or form where you each know what is going on with the child. Yeah. And I want to, I want to kind of sum this up. We, we've talked about this from a very healthy place. Um, and I'm sure somebody who's listening is saying, Hey, this all sounds really good, but I'm co-parenting with a narcissist and we've done podcasts about this and healthy conflict resolution is just not applicable. It's just, it doesn't happen. So I want to encourage you two things. One, um, you can control what you do. You cannot necessarily control what they do. So you can practice healthy co-parenting for your own mental health, for your own sanity and your yes. own emotional health, your own spiritual health. You can practice this. Don't get drug into a, an opportunity just because your ex-spouse is unhealthy or they yeah. are disconnected with reality or however you want to phrase that. You can control what you do and you can make sure that those things happen from your side so that you have peace about this. Yes. Um, one of the hardest things about co-parenting is, is you're not going to always find the solution is right there in front of you the next day. No. Sometimes silence is the solution. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is just time is the solution. Sometimes there's not a solution right there right now. Yeah. So you have to look at this from, if you're tuning into this podcast, what what is my spirit telling me on how I'm supposed to act? And how am I going to move forward tomorrow with the best being the best co-parent I can mm -hmm. when maybe you don't agree on everything? And that's the part where you have to ask the Holy Spirit, like, what am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. How am I that's supposed good. to treat this? And what does the what is the Lord telling you about what is your next step tomorrow? Yeah. Um, and our hope is, is that eventually you find healthy co-parenting. Um, sometimes that's possible. Sometimes it's not possible. Yeah. So that is where we're at today. I do want to encourage you one thing. Um, sometimes taking a step in obedience is the hardest thing to do. And if you're listening to this and you're like, I really want this, send it to your ex-spouse and say, hey, will you listen to this? Yeah. And just tell me if this is possible. Yeah. Because most people, both people want peace, but some people don't know how to get that. So take an opportunity, send that to your ex-spouse and say, hey, is this possible? Yeah. So, Thanks so much for joining in with us as we have talked about high yes. conflict ex spouses and how to have peace in that moment. Yeah, how to how to have conflict that leads to resolutions without shutting down emotionally. Can't wait to be with you next week where we dive into more Let's Therapy uh, podcast topics and have a great time together. Yes, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Be blessed in all that you do. 